<laughs> so today I'm going to talk about maximal versus minimal running shoes. I get a lot of people asking me about what type of shoes I like to run in, my thoughts on running shoes and my thoughts on kind of minimal running, so something like a five finger compared to maximal shoes or something like a Hoka Ron Ron here. So looking across my shoes here, this is all my running shoes that I have at the moment. As you can see it's a good range, so it goes all the way from five finger Vibrams to the Hokas themselves. So to kick it off, five brand five fingers, you get a lot of people obviously asking about these, a lot of people who have perhaps read Born to Run or something like this and really trying to connect with that kind of natural running form. Um, I don't recommend running and wrapping five fingers myself. I think they're good for walking around in, really good for like, you know, splitting your toes out, really helping straighten out those toes. But for running around in, I don't think it's the best thing as obviously you're getting all that impact through the road, back up through the foot. It takes a long time to try to transition to it safely into running in five fingers and can often lead to injury if you try and do too much too soon as well. So if you're looking to do some sort of barefoot running, um, I don't recommend you buy five fingers. I recommend you just go out there just barefoot in your, you know, your natural way. You're obviously more cautious where you're placing your foot then and you're more conscious about what you do with your body. I believe barefoot running is a good way to really improve your running form, to really think about where you're placing your feet, how you're using your body. So just find a nice bit of grassy patch, maybe the infield of athletics track is really good place to do it especially after you know a, a hard session on the track or something like that just take your shoes off just do some really easy slow running barefoot on the grass can be a really good way to improve your form but obviously that's a different video altogether as a general shoe that I recommend I always recommend something with a bit more cushioning so this is the Brooks Pure Flow so this is a shoe that I've had a couple pairs of now and I really enjoy the shoe it's not too heavy it's quite light but you've got some decent cushioning in the shoe there and it's quite a flexible shoe as well so obviously different people need different things when it comes to running shoe, shoes some people need some, a shoe of support um, but I really think that shoe of too much support isn't necessarily a good thing as you can get too reliant on that and obviously it can be something that can lead you to injury you should always try and strengthen your feet up and something like this with kind of a little bit of support but not too much can really help you out with that okay so like I said everyone's got different needs but I always recommend the shoe with more cushioning and something with a lower drop. A lot of standard shoes out there, the standard kind of running shoe kind of format was something with a higher drop, so something about 12 millimeters. But for myself, I really enjoy something with a lower drop around four millimeters. And I think a lot of running shoes are kind of going this way now. All these shoes here have a really low drop, so four millimeters, this is about four millimeters, four millimeters, four, and this one's even a two. And I think it's something that's really important for trying to develop that kind of natural running gait. Something with a lower drop really kind of promotes that kind of high cadence rate and really helps improve your running efficiency as well at the same time. And if you start wearing a shoe like this, you'll really notice how much more comfortable you may feel, you know, throughout the day on the longer kind of ultra step as well. Okay, so at the other end of the scale to the Vibram Five Fingers, we've got something like the Hoka One One. So this is a Hoka One One Buaka. Um, so as I said, this is a really low drop shoe, so that's two millimeters. So that means that the cushioning from the back to the forefoot there's only a two millimeter difference in staff height so um, you know it's not a lot there and it makes for a really nice smooth ride and obviously you can see there's a big wedge of cushioning in this shoe so this is a shoe that I really enjoy and I've got it recently and incredibly light um, but this is something that's definitely going to be beneficial for you as a long runner if you're doing you know any ultras any long road miles as well you're taking a lot of pounding to your legs something like a hoka is a really good option because obviously saving that pounding to the legs is going to save the build-up fatigue and really help you know perform longer and, and you know feel a lot fresher towards the end of the race you've only got to look at runners like sage candidate who's a hoka athlete and you know he's obviously doing something right and his shoes are obviously doing a job for him he's winning a lot of ultras and doing really well at it so you know these are all the kind of shoes that i run in these are what i'm talking about you know you've got minimal shoes all the way to the maximum i don't think you really need to branch out into any one specific shoe to really perform as a runner i really think it's a good idea to rotate shoes to really running different styles of shoes throughout your training you know as I said these are all kind of four mil low drop shoes so in terms of that they're not that different and even though this is a big shoe here it's nice and flexible as well so you are promoting the natural running form and promoting the muscles in your feet to do their job properly and to strengthen up without needing all the extra structure that a lot of shoes do offer these days so again the natural promoting shoes but at the same time you've got some good cushioning in there because at the end of the day we don't live in a natural world all the time we're not running on soft trails, you know. A lot of the trails I run on are really rocky, really uneven, lots of roots. If I was to run in something like the five on five fingers, that would really slow me down and I wouldn't enjoy my run as much. So I recommend if you're going for a shoe, don't worry about, you know, if you think it looks a bit silly with the stack height or whatever, find something that's just comfortable for you. Some decent cushioning so you're gonna to wanna to go out and run in it every single day. And I recommend it to every runner, get two pairs of trainers because at the end of the day, it makes that one pair 
you know, last a lot longer. If you've got a couple pairs or even three pairs, they're all going to last the same amount of time and you're not going to be spending any more money than if you just got one pair, you know, and then bought another pair once they're knackered and another pair. And you'll really enjoy your running for it. You'll have a lot of different kind of options available to you. And it would be nice to, you know, every day get up and run in a different pair of shoes. It sounds fun to me. Anyway, guys, if this video was helpful, let me know. Leave some comments if you've got any questions. You can email me at harryrunsuk at gmail.com. But um, thanks for watching, guys. Check out my Instagram. Check me out on Strava and subscribe if you haven't already. And let me know what other videos you want me to film for you. Thanks for watching. Take care. Happy running.